Thanks, Yuri. Uh, so, uh, our next presentation will be by uh, Mikhail Luzanin, and uh, he's one of the main artists, to be precise, the main artist from the, uh, of the uh, Patigor Steel game, which I hope you, some of you have already seen. So, welcome, Misha. Hi to all. As uh, Evgeny already said, my name is Mikhail Luzanin. I am an artist uh, in Blend for Web team. I am work for Blend from Web about uh, three years and in Blender about six years. And I'm in charge of making uh, different 2D scenes to show uh, Blender, Blend from Web capabilities. Uh, and I would like to share with you my experience on a specific example uh, that we called Pettigore's uh, Tale. And uh, I hope you already seen it on our site. And if not, we'll try to show you uh, a teaser. Evgeny, please open a teaser. Maybe you already seen it. We really work hard on this presentation uh, from time to time. <laughs> it's our uh, first very complex uh, scene and our first very complex uh, game application uh, that we uh, released. Not all of uh, people in the internet uh, like this. <laughs> but it's really a big step for us and we hope it will be a big step uh, for the WebGL at all. We've done, done this big step for you, so you can just run after this. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next slide. Yeah, this. And uh, you can follow the link and you can play on your own this game. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, let's talk about how it was made. It's a very complex scene. It combines many 3D, uh, 3D models, textures, uh, different type of animation and uh, two uh, type of interactivity. And in my presentation, I would like to cover three points, three main points. It's firstly uh, how to assemble the scene and uh, making its main parts. Next, I will talk about uh, combining NLA uh, with Visual Logic Node system, our, our own Blend for Web Visual Logic system. And finally, I will talk about optimization tricks and techniques. Uh, next slide. Uh, here you can see a map of the scene uh, where the main uh, action takes place. This is, um, uh, uh, here you can see a starting viewpoint. It's a very important part of the scene because the user will see uh, this part of the scene when he firstly uh, loads the application. Also, here you can see two cameras. Uh, one camera, it's uh, colored uh, yellow, uh, was used to um uh was used to uh make uh, action for the screen saver and the second se second camera uh is made for the main interest scene and it moves along from the hill to the village uh between trees and so on uh, next please uh this is a, a detailed map of the scene uh, the blue area is more detailed uh, than red area uh, because uh, the user see it's very closely. So here you can see a blue area near the starting viewpoint. Also, uh, area uh, around the road and around the village have more details because the camera moves very closely to these areas. 
Uh, next, please. Here you can see a pie chart of uh, that shows you a uh, various part of the scene. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, divided into two big parts. Uh, the light blue pie uh, part of the pie chart shows uh, the objects uh, that um, included directly in the main blend file. And uh, these uh, small objects like uh, village paths, uh, characters, animations and others are just linked uh, to this main blend file from another smaller blend files. And, um, uh, this uh, dark blue outlined uh, portion represents object that uh, lost to the application on the fly uh, when uh, the user press push push uh, intro button or the screen saver starts. Uh, we will talk uh, about this in details uh, later. Uh, please next. So many of our users uh, sent to us their application, we open them and we, we see uh, that uh, most of them made directly in one blend, blend file. They um, not divide them into small uh, sets and then combine them in one blend file. So uh, I would like uh, to point uh, why it's uh, so matter to divide your uh, project into several parts. And the first point, it uh, if you divide your project into several parts, it allows multiple usage of the same object. For example, you have a, a, an assets um, with trees, so it will be a library with trees, and you can use uh, this library in many um, different scenes. This scene, or another project, or uh, several scenes of this project. Uh, also, it's easy to work with each part of the assets if it's divided into uh, many small blend files than one big file. For example, if you need to correct tree, you, you don't need to search it in uh, one big blend file. You just opened, uh, you just can open an asset, uh, asset with uh, trees and uh, make some modifications. Uh, it's also easy to understand the structure of the project uh, if it's organized in many small parts. Um, uh, next is uh, because your main scene will consist mostly of the links to the assets, it will uh, the main blend file will take less space. Uh, and the final and uh, one of the biggest benefit of dividing uh, the scene into several parts is if you work in a team, you can work uh, on a project uh, at the same time, and you don't need to wait until another person on another. Uh, uh, part of the team will finish with the project to work with it. Next, please. So, uh, how can we add access to the uh, main blend file? Uh, here you can see a uh, four, four uh, points. Uh, only uh, two of uh, these points is a really a method to add uh, objects uh, to the main blend file, and the second. Uh, and the uh, last of them, two last of them, uh, only a method to add, uh, to duplicate already linked object in the main blend file. And the first object is a directly link mesh or object. Uh, the disadvantages of this method is that you, if you link object to your main blend file from another blend file, you can change its locations. And if you link directly mesh, uh, the object preferences are not applied. And uh, using dubli groups is the s second uh, method uh, to link assets, uh, the best choice because uh, it allows uh, you to uh, link object with, it pr with its preferences and uh, also to link many objects in, s in the same group. group. Uh, the particle system uh, used to duplicate objects uh, when you need to duplicate it very quickly. For example, you have a trees in your assets and you want to dupli duplicate it on the terrain's geometry. You just create a particle system and, will, and uh, this particle system will uh, do uh, the duplication for you very quickly. But it um, have more or less control of each tree. Um, also, uh, one of these 
one of the disadvantages of this method is that you cannot use techniques, uh, special techniques, uh, um, often used in a game engine uh, like LODs. So uh, to avoid this, you can use particle system on a small amateurs with a portion of uh, objects and uh, set up LODs directly on the amateurs. We will discuss this in detail later. Next, please. Uh, so let's look. Uh, let's see how it looks like. Uh, in the uh, top left corner, you can see clean ground without any object and assets added to it. In the top right corner, you can see a stones added directly on the main's uh, terrain geometry using particle system. In the left, uh, in the bottom left corner, you can see. Um, a particle system on a small amateurs they shown as uh, orange wireframe uh, and uh, in this particle system uh, bush was added and then uh, this amateurs was uh, placed on the terrain geometry and in the uh, bottom right corner you can see trees added uh, to the terrain geometry uh, using dupli groups dupli groups next please so uh, let's take a look at techniques used to make the terrain. Um, uh, we used uh, coloring in black, black and white masks to create color textures from a black and white mask. We'll discuss it later in details. Uh, also, uh, uh, vertex color masking was used to determine uh, where each texture will be ta uh, will be placed on the geometry. Uh, also, where uh, vertex color uh, mask uh, for uh, dirt map was used to bring out the roughness of the terrain. Um, mixing a tile and bake baked uh, maps was uh, used to create uh, to uh, mix. Um, texture of the road and uh, the texture of the terrain uh, like grass soil ground and others and um, to create terrain geometry uh, scooping was used as well as mesh modeling and we will discuss it later uh, next here you can see uh, uh, a clean ground in the top left corner in the uh, top right corner you can see uh, so in the left uh, in the top left corner, you can see a final result of the combining all uh, layers that I al already point. And in the top right corner, you can see a frame of the terrain geometry. As you can see, it's uh, regular on the road and it's regular around the road. It was uh, done the, uh, this way to mix uh, two different types of texture and uh, textures of the ground uh, like uh, grass, uh, dead leaves, soil ground, rock rocks, uh, tile texture and texture of the um, road are not tiled, they was baked for a specific mesh. So uh, then this mesh was uh, just uh, tiled on the geometry, by the geometry. Uh, in the uh, bottom left corner you can see two masks it's a vertex color mask uh, that was used to locate texture on the ground and a dot mask that that was used to uh, highlight uh, to highlight uh, the geometry roughness in the top uh, in the bottom uh, right corner you can see a mask that was used to combine uh, uh, texture of the road and uh, texture of the, of the ground, like uh, grass, dead leaves, soil, ground, and others. Uh, next, please. And let's talk about a uh, very important part of the scene, of the Pettigore style inter scene. It's a camera animation. Uh, this is a, an example of setup uh, for the skin saver. Uh, camera actions. Uh, here you can see how many cameras was used and uh, where they were located. Uh, because you can not export more than one camera in the scene, uh, you will need to bake all your cameras directly. Uh, uh, you will need to bake your, all your cameras animations uh, separately and then combine them in one linear animation. Uh, next please. Uh, let's look how it was made. In the uh, left 
in the uh, top left corner you can see a baker animation uh, blender baker animation tool uh, we set up to bake animation from one frame to another uh, this uh, bake animation tool was used to bake uh, each uh, camera animation separately and then this uh, animation was embedded into NLA strips uh, like uh, for example this and small NLA strip and then from this uh, small NLA strips with cam uh, with actions in it uh, was combined one linear uh, animation and it was applied to exported camera for export next please and as, a, as I said before, Pettigrew Stale is a very complex scene. We were unable to achieve some special effects using only NLA animation, and we combined it uh, with our own Visual Logic Node system to, that allows us more control of the scene. Uh, here's a simplified representation of how it works. Uh, before any action start, um, that uh, we used uh, logic nodes to do some preparation. For example, we hide something or unhide something, play specific animations. Then uh, when user press uh, uh, intro button or um, another preparation uh, made by uh, logic nodes, and then uh, and la timeline is played from first market to another, from another from the start point to the first uh, part start marker, and then it stops. And uh, another logic nodes uh, do their things. For example, they uh, hide already uh, not needed uh, objects and or unhide something that will be needed in the next scene and then it starts again and uh, like this it uh, will be till the end of the scene next please in the next section we will talk about optimization tricks and techniques so here you can see a list of the techniques that we use to optimize this scene and the first is uh, uh, combining several textures into one. Uh, to minimize the amount of the textures in this scene, we combine some of the textures um, into one image using RGBA layers and uh, then color them directly in the material. Uh, next is using the LOQ node in the material is our own blend for web LOQ node. It stands for a level of quality. Um, it allows you to create different uh, node trees uh, for different level of detail in in the same material. Uh, next is hiding objects before they are needed. In the um, node uh, logic system, we have such node as hide object. It uh, can be used to hide specific uh, object that you uh, already uh, don't need in your action, or before they, uh, or before this object will be needed. Uh, it's more optimized uh, than you just put your object somewhere where uh, camera can see it because your uh, GPU will still compute it. And if you use uh, our hide object for this, uh, it will be more optimized. Uh, uh, next is using a special page param node, it's our own uh, logic node uh, that can be used to de determine uh, which graphic level was chosen chosen by the, by the user and then make uh, some optimization according to this information. Next is using different measures for shadow casting and reflection. W uh, We'll also use additional uh, objects uh, for shadow casting and reflection with some uh, more simplified material and geometry uh, instead of instead of objects that are really rendered. We will discuss it later. And the final uh, method is loading ad as an additional JSON file with extra object, and we'll discuss it later too. Uh, next, please. So, in the uh, Right on the right, you can see uh, a material that was created using uh, these four textures. It's a common method uh, of of creating um, uh, textures, and in the uh, on the on 
on the left you can see uh, that they converted to black and white mask and then they were uh, combined into one image and they uh, were uh, then they were colored directly in the material so as you can see uh, the difference between uh, this um, final results in the material uh, um, not so big and uh, but on the right four textures was used and on the left only one image was used to create this material uh, next uh, this is an example of using loq node uh, on the top you can see uh, loq node uh, that connected to uh, two type of uh, trees uh, on the top, uh, the tree, uh, not tree, um, more complex, and um, on the bottom, it's uh, more simplified. And according to uh, uh, graphic level choice of the user, only uh, one of these trees will pass to output by this uh, special uh, logic node. Uh, it's a special material node, sorry. And uh, in in the bottom, in in the bottom left corner, you can see an example of high quality version of, of this material. And uh, in the bottom right corner, you can see a low quality version of this material. And they are different. Next, please. And this is an example of using page param uh, node, our own lo uh, logic node. Ah, sorry, not page for I'm sorry. It's an uh, example of uh, using a hide object node. And um, uh, this uh, hide, hide object node uh, do some preparation before the sense starts. And in the blender, uh, in the bottom uh, right corner, you can see uh, how, would, how the sense looks in the blender. You can see a sphere, um, a, a really big sphere. Uh, and some uh, characters that uh, needed only a specific uh, scene action. And in the left, you, you can see this sphere. Uh, in the left, you can see uh, a picture of uh, a screenshot from the um, engine. And the sphere is hidden uh, using a hide object node. Uh, because uh, this sphere is uh, don't need for this uh, scene action right now. Next, please. And uh, now we talk about page param node. Uh, in the top left corner, you can see a browser string with uh, a sp special parameter quality that's set to high. In the on the right, you can see an example of using this page param node. Uh, it reads uh, uh, the parameter quality from the string, then it compares uh, values of this parameter and uh, a string and it's uh, then it checks true or not and then it uh, do some optimization according uh, to level quality choice of the user and in the bottom left corner you can see uh, two pictures I on the left picture you can see a small leaves that falling from the trees and on the right picture, you can see uh, you can see them because they were were hidden uh, using these techniques. Next, please. And uh, here's an example. Uh, here's an example of using uh, additional geometry for uh, casting shadows and reflections. On the left picture, you can see uh, an objects that are really rendered on the screen. In the middle, you can see uh, an object uh, that outlined by the red. Uh, this uh, special geometry was used to cast shadows uh, for the mountain. But uh, the geometry of the mountain that uh, really rendered on the screen don't cast shadow at all. And this uh, geometry, this special geometry, are more simplified. Uh, it's uh, without material, and it will be more optimized to use a special uh, geometry for shadow casting. And on the right picture, you can see uh, and you can see objects that 
uh, not really rendered on the screen, but they rendered only in reflections. For example, they rendered uh, only in the reflections of the river. Next, please. Uh, and final op and final optimization optimization that was made for the scene is dividing uh, the scene into two big parts. Uh, the first part of the scene loads immediately when user starts the application, um, and the second part load when it pushes uh, press uh, pushes uh, intro button or the screen server starts after a few seconds. And on the left uh, picture you can see uh, the scene already loaded with additional JSON file. There are much of uh, uh, stuff, much of uh, different uh, um, objects. And on the right you can see uh, how it looks like if the additional JSON file were not loaded. Next, please. And that's all. Uh, so let's do the conclusion. Uh, divide your projects into cellular parts, always combine textures and use LODs, optimize your application for the different devices, and w o always try to do something new. For example, blend for web. Don't be conservative. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Please, your questions. A anybody has a question? Ah, yes. Uh, please, uh, if you if you don't understand, feel free to ask in yes, Russian. Yes, yes, on any language. <laughs> uh, do we have some online questions? Nope. Ah, yes, please. One question. Okay. Uh, maybe you can say uh, why we see this uh, frozen. Uh, but uh, in introduction scene when uh, we see the picture moving like by steps uh, when camera moving like frozen not uh, so smooth as uh, you try to predict it should be in the introduction scene we see ah, you mean that it's uh, frozen a little thing. Uh, a little, yes. A little. In every soft, uh, hardware which I see it, uh, it has these steps. It's hmm. like a part of uh, Blender engine, or it's like a part of WebGL, or it's, it's like uh, part of optimization. Of it's uh, it it yeah. This frozen was um, oh, how to say. <laughs> uh, it's because uh, the animation was baked by the steps. What do do? It's uh, about uh, uh, ten, ten frames. Only after t uh, ten frames, animation was baked. So uh, each uh, ten frames, you can see a little um, frozen. Yeah. So we, we we can fix it by uh, by like baking by each by frame it in, uh, in one hundred steps, for example. Not ten, but one. No, it uh, can be fixed if you bake each frame. Each frame. Ah. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Please. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay, you talk about this is a game, right? Mm, yes. And uh, you not mentioned about the scripting language? What is this? Is JavaScript or maybe py Python? Ah, it's a JavaScript. It's JavaScript. Yeah. So, the idea is to, you know, to combine this workflow is uh, in, in a Blender user interface. So this is a really great solution because you don't have to use any different tools. You already have the user interface in the Blender, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what's the really purpose? Is just to the the output pr project is going to be the the very good maintenance, or maybe just about the workflow. It's going to be easier. What's your main purpose? Was for the output project or may, or just for the current workflow? Uh, you mean uh, the main purpose of using JavaScript? Bla no, 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 blend for web. Blend for web. Blend for in, web. General. in general? Yeah. With JavaScript or what? No. <laughs> what, what's the purpose, the, the more you're aiming? So is this a really output project? I mean, or just the workflow? Because I was speaking, I was mentioned about the, the scripting language because as a, as a user, of your blank for web, mm -hmm. 
I am uh, looking for the, the maintenance for, for the, the further implementation of certain new features. You know, not not which not using the blame for web for especially. You know, the like uh, new JavaScript libraries. You know, the maybe some new engine, the physical engine. Do you understand what what I'm talking about? Uh, sorry, I can't understand not you. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned about the, how the workflow goes mm -hmm. for the to creation of this new scene. This is very convenient. This is very easy to understand, right? But my question is. Okay, this is very good, but uh, what we will have for the output? Uh, after you create yes, the scene? After, after creating all the stuff, so so you are combining all these files files mm -hmm. into some folder, right? Yes. Which called the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, this project will contain the, all the, the scriptings, like the scenes, the models, the JavaScript files, the JSON mm -hmm. files. And uh, as a user, I want to, I don't have to extend all of this, right? Mm -hmm. On is this your the aim to have this in the, your blank for web, or or you just uh, at the moment you are aiming only on the workflow in the in the blender? <laughs> it's still difficult. <laughs> Maybe someone understand now. Well, generally, for an artist, which Misha is, uh, everything can be done in Blender. So uh, this is his only tool. Okay. Says. JavaScript is my side. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, you're free to combine it with uh, any kind of tools you want. So uh, for you, you are a programmer, yeah? Programmer. Yes. Yeah. For you, a Blender web can be. Um, it is just a library uh, as a for programmer. So you can combine it with uh, any other tool. Exactly. That, that was my question. Is it really to an output project so you can use it as a regular JavaScript files and some something, right? Sure, of Maybe course. Maybe I can replace course. the textures and something like this without any a, anything in the Blender, right? The separate. So I can. Ah, I have yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Can you use it even without Blender? Yeah, I get exactly. The idea. Of course you can, but um, it will be you know kind of tricky. We are not. Uh, 3GS or something where uh, our main aim, as you mentioned, is Blender. But you can create, uh, I mean, uh, call some uh, methods to actually create the scene inside JavaScript and uh, do not even touch Blender at all. But I don't think that's a really good idea. <laughs> yes, of course, they're, they're very nice to have mm -hmm. just one tool, mm -hmm. like Blender and your Blend for Web extension, and just create everything you need and just push the button and you on the output you will have but yeah. this is in the perfect world <laughs> and in the real projects the customer every time will ask something new and sure. uh, maybe he will ask something which not including in the blender i mean i mean in blender for web mm, yes yes so uh, i think i will be mm -hmm. I, I just a little bit uh, more uh, looking further so you will speak about this later right well probably part to uh, this is after me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so this, I'll say this, some words later. This is this. Okay, so thanks. It was something new for me too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thanks. Uh, uh, microphone, yeah. microphone. Hi. Uh, just regarding the question, maybe uh, with the, the prototype of a game, so we implemented into it uh, also a dialogue engine. But it's an outside library. Also, an inventory. It's an outside library and is integrated with the IVs and uh, talks to the Blend for Web engine. But we can keep it all apart, develop it apart because it's from uh, some open source code and uh, some other stuff we integrated. So we think it's always uh, it's right now it's quite simple to integrate and to use without and with Blend for Web um, and with external libraries. So maybe just it just f fits our needs. I don't know. Uh, Also, uh, also give some additional uh, comment um, of myself. Uh, as I'm not a programmer, I'm not an artist, I'm not an animator, I'm just a designer. Uh, 
Uh, in my research area, we do a lot of works. We use 3D scan to create 3D content. So we want to public to uh, uh, publish to the uh, on the website. Before I use the Blender for Web, we use commercial software such like Unity and something. It's really uh, ha have some disadvantages such like. Uh, First, it's commercial software, so there's some a lot of problems. And uh, second, uh, when users want to uh, uh, watch these uh, uh, resources, uh, it's based on the device. If you use your uh, smartphone, you use your computer, or you use some other uh, other tool to suffer the internet is uh, have different user experience. But uh, at present, I just turn my tools uh, into Blend for Web. It's uh, just build a, a, a same user experience in different platform. That's why I turn my so software into Blend for Web. I think it's just a little additional. Thank you so much. We got some question here. Uh, hello, my name is Kirill. Thank you for your talk. And uh, I have a uh, somewhat provocative question, so please, no eggs, tomatoes. Uh, well, I saw the demo on my computer. It's a beefy machine, but it's no gaming machine. It's have integrated graphics and uh, performance. Well, it wasn't what you call smooth. And uh, my question is, uh, is uh, is graphic is, is content like pushing the platform, but needs some artistic refinement to look uh, better, or we really struggling with the performance of platform or the engine here? Because, well, I saw uh, demos with comparable graphics which uh, run much, much smoother on my machine. No, uh, when you start the application, you can see that there's a level choice, level of graphic choice. So maybe you just need to switch to a lower level. I know again. My yeah. question was why uh, the high one. Uh, while it's it looks good, don't mm -hmm. don't, uh, don't take it wrong, but it's not what you call like stunning because. Uh, and my question is: it was like fast technical demo, and uh, it needs some artistic refinement. Or we really like hitting the wall of performance here of platform or the engine. Maybe a colleague can help you with um, the question. No, this demo was uh, made to improve, really improve uh, the engine to find some uh, new techniques to render, to optimize what. And this uh, was really. Uh, a uh, new step to optimize our engine, and we still uh, uh, will use it to um, uh, to improve our <laughs> the performance is uh, not a uh, mission topic actually. Yeah. Uh, well, we have uh, some bottlenecks. Of course, we have it uh, them. Uh, and uh, yes, as Misha said, uh, particular sale is kind of benchmark, you know, uh, even not for only users, but for us as well. So we see, uh, you know, the narrow parts and uh, yes, we can uh, promise that the performance uh, will become much better. Uh, and uh, actually we have uh, my topic on this uh, uh, theme and uh, uh, Ivan Lubovnikov also will tell you about the future of blend for web and optimization is a really important part, part there. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, as I understand, uh, the exact performance optimization techniques are a little bit outside of the topic of the conference. So, if you will be so kind to talk to me, uh, well, lunch time, for no, no, uh, they are not uh, really apart uh, from the uh, topics of the conference. We'll tell about it uh, a bit later. Just we need to, okay. to wait a little more. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. More questions. Uh, I just uh, listen to uh, answers and think maybe you plan uh, make tool like uh, Google web page uh, speed uh, but for 3D scenes like uh, propose some optimization uh, for the scene uh, for the users and the users. Thanks for the suggestion. We'll have to think about it, but we actually uh, are very reluctant of any web services. So uh, we 
we try to make it standalone solution, completely standalone solution. Uh, even don't want to um, make uh, some hosting service in the near future. We are reluctant because there are a lot of um, WebGL frameworks which uh, offer such possibilities, such, uh, for example, services hosting, optimization, something. But uh, this is how we see the future. We, we see the future without uh, boundaries of uh, concrete uh, web services. So everybody can install on its own web service. So it's like, um, if I understand you correctly. <laughs> I mean like a tool uh, which can uh, propose optimization technique to your own scene, like uh, divide it into parts, uh, like combine textures if it can uh, analyze a lot of uh, textures and so on. It's like can be embedded uh, inside a Blender or use it like standalone leap or... Uh, so we got uh, several tools actually um, already included in the SDK, uh, such as uh, com a resource compiler. Uh, of course, uh, these uh, tools cannot uh, do so far such things as merging textures into one. This is uh, not implemented no, so far, but yes, I think this is, will be useful. Thank you for suggestion. Okay, so thank you, Mikhail. Mm -hmm. Thanks.